Six months ago, it was winter and I grabbed my ice skates and I attached motors on them. Building on that concept, today we're doing the exact same thing, but on rollerblades. For simplicity, I love using hub motors for these kind of projects. A hub motor is nothing but a outrunner motor, but without the shaft. And you have a wheel attached on the rotor. So all I had to do was 3D print these brackets and so that the motor can be attached with the shaft in the middle and also have support by the 3D printed material inside. And so now the motor can spin freely. And all I have to do is solder the wires, which by the way, I'm using the exact same wires as on the electric skates. So this is the sensor cable, this is the power motor cables. They are going from the skate, from the roller blade, all the way up to the backpack, where I'll store two batteries. These are 36 volts, 12 amp hours together. So quite a serious battery. Hopefully we'll be able to ride for, you know, a few kilometers at least, hopefully more. The motor controller I yanked out of an electric skateboard and this transmitter talks to this controller so that I can push this upwards in order to go forward and this down in order to brake. Yes, we have induction braking. The main purpose of regenerative braking is to conserve energy. It will look something like that and that's why I love hub motors. You don't need any sprockets, you don't need any you know, belts, a chain. You can just attach them and so it makes it very very versatile basically. I did I did have to go through quite a bit of testing before I found the correct dimensions and I know you like to see the process of me failing before I succeed. So, well, here we go. That was my attempt. This is the kind of project that I cannot see how this would not work. So this is the mounts from the ice skates. I'm using the exact same motors. Yes, they did survive this. Here I'm just eyeballing the dimensions and replacing the spiked wheels with the rubber wheels. So I was able to put them through my Ender 7, which is starting to become my favorite printer as you can print ludicrously fast. Then the 8mm threaded rod is used to hold everything together. Whoa. Jeez. I decided to super glue a heatsink smack on the controller to at least delay the inevitable overheating. Pay close attention, this might be the video where I seriously hurt myself. You wouldn't want to miss that, would you? And at that very moment, the motor controller died. Why? I have no idea. The only thing I knew was that I would have to find a new one somewhere.
Okay, plugged in the new controller, it didn't work. But now it didn't work with the original motors either, so maybe it never worked. I eventually found the controller and soldered all the connections again. But I also tried replacing the motors with the one from this board, but I just couldn't get the screws off. So I did even more testing and tried different motors with different controllers and sometimes the transmission with the new controller just wouldn't work. So I decided to jump to electric speed controllers instead. Okay, what's going on is un problemo. It's actually 10 different problems, but it kind of boils down to the controller. The 3D print that I did, it's supposed to be a little square. It kind of fits into the motor right in there. And that's sheared off, unsurprisingly. But that caused this motor to short circuit and so it doesn't work anymore. But also it did have one other cost effect and that's the controller that came with those motors, perfectly capable, but when it short circuit, it ruined this controller. And so what did I do? Well, I salvaged my other controller from the other skateboard and now this doesn't work. What did I do after that? I where did you go? Here's my third board. Here's the fourth board that did work but didn't have the same pinout on the sensor cable. I found speed controllers with the correct pinout on the sensor cable and these do seem to work. Soldered all the connections to fit the new motors and luckily enough I found a completely new motor. It's not completely new, it's actually kind of used. But yeah, I'm gonna replace the old motor with this one, it's the same one. And so hopefully we'll, uh, we'll get the ball rolling again. I printed new mounts, a little stronger hopefully, and uh, I adjusted a few parameters. But just now they are orange, so it'll be faster. But yeah, had a mental breakdown, lost hair, but now it's fixed, so... A little stronger hopefully. When the new mounts decided to disappoint, I grabbed some old mounts and reshaped them to fit. The weakest point of the mounts is definitely this bulging square. When accelerating or braking, there is going to be a substantial amount of force twisting it. Everything was fixed so I could finally try them out. The mounts were a tad long, so I printed new ones and tried them on screen. The things I do for YouTube views. So yes, I, I, I can break. And I, I go the other way and it breaks. The mounts feel perfect. I, I swapped over to slightly modified mounts and now I don't have to lean back as much. So let's see how far I can go on two batteries. They are 36 volts, 12 amp hours. Let's see the range. Okay, it doesn't really matter that I'm going back and forth. I have an app that measures the distance. The sound is incredible.
Okay, this is kilometer number four. I really have no idea about the range. I reckon it's gonna be about 10 kilometers. So I really don't wanna get stuck because there's no way for me to get back without, you know, walking. I, I couldn't see any cracks in the PLA, which I honestly thought would be a problem at this point. I guess we'll figure it out when we crash. It feels pretty good. I don't wanna rip them off just yet. So that's a good sign. Okay, so this is the side view of the acceleration. Hey, that was 10 kilometers and I didn't fall on my ass once. I, they are really easy to ride. First of all, anyone could do it. Really not very hard. What happened to the motor? I, I can't believe it didn't break. It rounded the corners. That's insane. So metal is definitely next up. No, no, I much rather have a spectacular crash. It's a much better ground for clickbait. W what do you even call this, man? Well, I'm decently surprised this concept even worked. I'm not seeing anyone else doing this with a hub motor design and the technical side of it, it's so simple. And so here's my idea for the next video. I'll take 500 watts motors, one in the front, one in the back, and I'll put tires on them. So we don't really increase the top speed, but we'll, we'll increase the amount of friction between well, because of the two motors instead of just the one. And also tires so that we could go off-road. Alright, that's it. That's all. Have an awesome day. Bye.